to forgive. We tell them you need to forgive, heal, and move on. And rightly so, because the Bible tells us that we ought to forgive. But this morning, I want to take a moment and talk to the one that's doing the hurting. Mm, we're real quiet. How many of you realize that God does not overlook our bad behavior? God will set us free, but we have the responsibility to go and make things right. Right? It's easy to say, well, you know, somebody hurt me. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then I tell you, you've got to forgive them. Yep, this is hard. But what happens when we hurt someone else? When, when the hurt originates with us? I want to talk to you just for a moment, and, and then I'll encourage you. I want to hit you just for a little bit, then I'll encourage you. In chapter 4, Jesus demonstrates, when we're reading this passage, we get to chapter 4 first, Jesus demonstrates his power over the forces of nature, and he commands the winds and the waves of a storm to be still. They come through that storm. I come to tell you, God's going to get us through a storm. God's going to deal with some issues. They come through that storm. Jesus is in the boat. They come through the storm, and now they enter this mostly Gentile territory in chapter 5. And it is here that he demonstrates his power over the forces of evil by casting out demons. He casts these demons out from a possessed man. We are told that this man had inner turmoil without a restraint. Or as the Bible states it, this man had an unclean spirit and chains. He had issues going on on the inside and chains on the outside. It says that he saw Jesus from afar and he came running and fell on his knees before him with reverence. James 2.19 tells us uh, even the demons believe and tremble. And there's something sometimes the demons recognize the presence of God before we do. Not Christ church folks, I'm, I'm saying some of these other churches. Because we know. But, but he falls at the feet of Jesus, recognizing that Jesus is a great deal more superior and a force to be reckoned with. Can I tell you something? There are some things that our families are wrestling with, but when we bring Jesus in, when we declare his word, when we walk in his truth, when we understand his principles and allow them to transform us, ah, he's a force to be reckoned with. The enemy cannot continue to prevail, but the God that we lift up and the God that we exalt, he comes in and things begin to change. This man was wrestling with a lot of issues, like many of us. How many of you have heard the saying that often hurt people hurt people? And sometimes we use the excuses, well, it's not my fault. I grew up like this. My mother did this. My father did this. Or I don't know any better. But I come to tell you that when you're under the influence of Jesus, when you're under the influence of the Holy Spirit, it's not about what happened in your past, but it's about you and God. It's about what he has done for you. You see, uh, whenever we're under the influence of something other than Christ, what we do is we open the door for the enemy to come in. And he comes in and he enslaves us and cause harm in our families. Sometimes we, we, we look at the pain we're going through and we only consider ourselves. But I want you to 
understand something. I want you to look at it on a larger basis. Where there is pain in the family, there are some things often present. The Bible tells us that this man, that he was living in the tombs. And often in Palestine, during, back in those times, often they buried dead things in tombs. When you're hurting someone or when there's hurt in the family, you have to understand that the relationship, if it is not dealt with, will begin to die. I know I'm talking to somebody. It's so quiet in here. Don't look at your spouse and don't look at your children. Just look to Jesus. Just look to Jesus. But when, when, when you hurt others and others hurt you, the relationship, and if it's not dealt with, the relationship begins to die. And the only thing that can be found in this tomb is dead things. It's not thriving. It's not moving forward. It has the appearance but you don't see the fruit as you should see. And then the Bible tells us, actually the story tells us, Luke gives us a little more detail as to his appearance. Luke said, and the man was naked. When unresolved issues are taking place in the family, there's a disregard to personal dignity. You become numb and cold to what others are saying. You get to the point, this is just how I do it. You don't care. You don't hear correction. You don't care how you look. You don't care how others perceive you. This is my way. This is how I'm going to do it. All your personal dignity, you see, you don't care. The Bible says that this man was isolated. Can I tell you something? This man was experiencing a lot of pain. Like many of us in our family, there's a lot of pain. There's a lot of pain. And, and, and can I be honest with you? You think that you can hide it, but there's a type of pain that you can't hide. There's at a certain point that there's so much pain, you can't hide it. It starts to seep out. And this man was in isolation. When there's hurt in the family, there's isolation. You're isolated from their world, and they're isolated from your world. Hmm? There you go. And then the last one, the Bible says this man was cutting himself. When you hurt your family or your loved ones, it is bringing harm to yourself. When you hurt your family, you are bringing harm to yourself. This man, every time he would cut himself, like many of us, it is a constant reminder of our pain. The scars remain as a constant reminder of our pain. But I love what I love is that though God, uh, the Lord, uh, he comes in and although his family and the community could do nothing to help this man, they tried to chain him up, bind him up, throw him in the tombs, get rid of him. They couldn't, they had no answer. But here it is, what his family and community couldn't do, Jesus did. He set this man free and the Bible tells us that Jesus, after he cussed, cut, uh, he cast the demons out of the man, it says something, he says, the man was sitting at his feet in his right mind and clothed. Uh, wait a minute. He was sitting in his right mind and clothed. I love that because in spite of what this man experienced, after he came into contact with Jesus and Jesus set him free, he was in his right mind and clothed. So being clothed, think about that. His scars, you couldn't see them anymore. The stuff that he went through, the healing that takes place when we come into contact with the Lord, he'll cover it so that it be no more. There's no longer a reminder of that. Ooh. Know about you, there's some stuff in my past. I thank the Lord, he covered me. 
I, I thank the Lord that there's some things that I did. And when I come and I repent, he says, I'll cover it as if it never took place. We serve that kind of God. He can take what we've done wrong and say, watch me turn it around. I can cast that thing out of you. I can set you free. I can make you hold that when another person see you, they step back and say, my goodness. You look like another man. You look like another woman. You look different. Uh, surely you've come into contact with God. But what happens next is a bit puzzling to me. The Bible tells us that when the people from the territory saw the man healed and free, they pleaded that Jesus would leave their territory. What? Now, whether it was their fear of him or they were upset because he destroyed the swine, you know, the pigs, it's not clear. But this man who was made free, he begged to go with Jesus. He begged to go with Jesus. Now, this is where I want, I'm going to park a little bit. He, he begged, he said, Listen here, you did for me what no other man could do for me. Uh, you did something that I know with man was impossible. I, I, you've got to let me go with you. But Jesus said something interesting. He said, no. He responded, no. He said, go home to your family. Go back to the place where you live. In other words, uh, uh, some of y'all not getting this, how this tying into family. I'm, 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 trying to, I'm trying to get you there. Uh, in other words, what I believe what he was trying to get the man to see is, you did a lot of damage at home. Go and make right what you messed up. Uh, uh, no? Uh, all right, let me stay with you. You see, this is what happens. Uh, sometimes we, we get saved and we come in and we say, yep, everything is fine. And, ooh, yes, Jesus, I, I want to be on the staff at the church. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I want to travel and do crusades. And, and I want to stand on large platforms. And I want everybody to know my name. Don't people know what Jesus did for me? I got gifts and I got testimonies. Woo, I want to travel. I want to travel. Somebody need to give me a title so I can go and do what I need to do. But yet here, Jesus says, you're not ready. Amen. Turn to a neighbor and say, not yet. Not yet. Uh, uh huh. Uh, uh. How many of you know that your home is your first ministry? Mm -hmm. Lord, I want to travel and do great things. Not yet. Lord, I, 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 I want to lay hands on the sick. Not yet. Lord, I want to be placed on staff. I want the credentials. Not yet. See, I believe the Lord wants us to understand I, that he doesn't want us to be a public success and a private failure. So he says, go home and bear witness to what I've done. How many of you know it's home that can really testify if there's been true change? No? Oh, yeah. See, it's at home. We know if, you, if, if at home you're telling somebody off and at church, praise the Lord. At church. Open the doors, come on in. But at home, you're hateful, angry, no fruits of the spirit, fruits of the flesh are on parade. Why? Right? Because of our hurt, because of our anger, because of our pain. But here... Jesus says, go home. I want you to go home and make things right. That's why Matthew 5, 23 tells us, if we come to the altar with our gift and remember that our, your brother has something against you, leave your gift and go and be reconciled to your brother. 
if you are up at the altar and worshiping, hallelujah, glory be to God. And you know at home things are not right. Saying is make it right. Be reconciled. Let God rule and reign. I come to tell you this morning, the enemy has taken enough. It's time to pursue and recover all that the Lord has promised us. It's time to see revival come to our family. It's time to see renewal come to our families. It's wonderful to have a great church, but it's better to have a great family and a great church. I love to see God use you in the church, but I love to hear when your children speak well of you, when your spouse speaks well of you, when your other family members say, surely that's a God-fearing person. Surely they love the Lord. I've seen them bow on their knees. I've seen them humble themselves. I've seen them cry out to God. I'd rather hear that because that translates not only into the church you'll be a powerhouse, not only in your community you'll be a powerhouse, but wherever you go because that's the true you. And so I'm tired, of, I'm tired of looking at the families that are broken. I'm tired of seeing kids committing suicide. I'm tired of seeing divorce. I'm tired of seeing sadness and brokenness. Can I be honest with you for a moment? I'm tired of seeing all of the havoc that the enemy has wrecked. I'm tired of seeing drugs rip our children from our hands. I'm tired of seeing where parents are being abused and parents abusing. I'm tired of all of those things, and yet we call ourselves believers. We call ourselves Christians, and yet no true transformation has taken place. It's time to have an encounter with the Most High God and tell the devil, get out of my territory. It's time. It's time. It's time to tell the devil, you've squatted on my property long enough. It's time to tell the devil, I've come to take back what's rightly mine. It's time to tell him he's got to go. He's got to go. We've got to stand on it and not be moved. We've got to stand on it, and when the devil rear his ugly head, we've got to take a stand and say, listen here, here's my title deed, the word. Here's my title deed to this property. God promised it to me. And I, for some of you are saying, well, you don't understand. The, uh, my, my family, I think that they're just too far gone. The enemy has taken them and brought them into his camp. Let me just talk to you. Uh, you might have a family member, they're just out there. They're out there, and you don't see hope. I remember I was the first one saved in my family, and I remember I would be up on the college campus, and, and they would be talking about family getting saved. I said, y'all don't know my family. They are out there. They are they gone. Not, not, not gone. They're gone. They, they, go, they just gone. They, I mean, they, they're just out there, and, and I, I, I don't know. And, they, and I was young, you know, and they would say, well, God is able. And I said, mm-hmm, yeah, God is able. And I remember going to a funeral, and uh, at the funeral was my sister's young baby, and at the funeral, at the end, there was an altar call given. And to my surprise, my family, many of my family, gave their lives to the Lord. Uh, during a time where people were grieving and mourning and feeling dejected and, and, and depressed, and yet God rescued some of my family right there. And then while I was up on campus, I just invited them to come visit. And I was shocked that some other family members went with me to church. And as I'm standing there watching, because some folks were being slain, and, and I'm sitting there like, oh, Lord, they're going to run up out of this church. They're going to leave the church. And, and it shocked me. But, but to watch that some family members went up and lifted their hands before God, and they too were slain by the power of God. They didn't know God, didn't have a relationship, but God got a hold of them. 
save them, baptize them, fill them with the Holy Ghost, and they're on fire for Jesus. I begin to see God do some things. My little sisters, they were little then, they grown now, that they would come and they would tag along behind me. They would hear me speaking in tongues and they would pull my, my pant leg and say, I want to do that too. And I'm saying, go ahead. And little, little Erica began to speak in tongues at a young age. God just came and rescued them. They were out there. It reminded me of 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter. I, I want you to see something. And it's just a word of encouragement right there. 1 Samuel, real quick, 30. Just want to read verses 6 through 8. You have it, say amen. Huh? If not, write it down, write it down, write it down. 30, beginning at 6, verse 8, says, Now David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Then David said to Abathar, the priest, Ahimelech's son, Please bring the ephod here to me. And Abathar brought the ephod to David. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them. And without fail, without fail, recover all. Get the picture. David and his men are at Ziglag. And while they were out, the Amalekites came in and took their wives, their children, their sons, their daughters, took their stuff and took them and brought them into the enemy's camp. And so David's men were upset. They were so mad at David, they wanted to take David out. They were so upset with him and so angry. And the Bible says that David did something. David called the priest. He says, listen here, bring me the ephod. I need to get with God. Look at the neighbor and say, we got to get with God. They got to get with God. See, David did what the man in Mark 5 did. They connected to Jesus. They had to get with God. And he got with God. He got there. And, and it is here. It is here. He got with God. He says, Lord, I need you to tell me what to do. Just like the enemy has strategies, I come to tell you the Lord has strategies. Uh, but his strategy supersedes the enemy's strategies. You say, what are you talking about? Well, uh, I believe God is calling us back to the closet. I, I believe God wants us to reconnect with him in a new and a fresh way. In Matthew's gospel, let me just tell you the story. It's connected to this. And then, uh, yeah, let me just tell it. In Matthew's gospel, in the sixth chapter, and, and you'll see it somewhere five through seven, all in there, you know, when it's talking about the Lord's Prayer. And in there, uh, uh, Matthew's Gospel, he begins to talk to them, and he says, when you pray, not if, but, but when you pray. He says, I don't want you to be like the hypocrites and the heathens. I don't, I don't want you to be like them. He says, I don't want you to be like when you pray, you do it to be seen by men. And, and I don't want you to do it that, that when you do it, you just have vain repetition or just a lot of words, thinking that you will be heard. Uh, he, says, he says, I don't want you to be like them. Uh, when he says that, it implies to me that we can pray and not be transformed. No? Uh, he says, they're praying and they think they're being heard. He said, but I don't want you to be like that. He says, when you pray, he says, I want you to come into your closet. I want you to come into the room. And then he says, and when you come in, shut the door. Wait a minute, wait a minute. And he says, I want you to come in. I want you to shut the door. This is what David had to do. 
This is the kind of praying we've got to do. We've got to come in. David had to shut the door because his men wanted to stone him. He could have been listening to their complaints. He could have been listening to them talking about what they were going to do. He could have been listening to his own heart saying, I messed up. I shouldn't have done this. But he, got to, he came into the presence of God and he shut the door. Look at the neighbor and say, you got to shut the door. Uh, you got to understand shutting the door is important. It's important because when we shut the door, we create an environment for the activity of God. When we shut the door, we shut out dirt, wind, strangers, accusations. Y'all following me? We got to shut some things out and get with God. Now, here's the hard part. When we shut the door, God says, now I can do private inspection. I can do private inspection. And so it is in this place, whether I've been hurt or I've hurt someone, it's in this place, if I need to forgive, I can forgive. If I need to be forgiven, I can be forgiven. If I need to repent, I can repent. It is here that the Lord transforms me. And as Matthew says, what I did in secret, what you did in secret, the time will come, I will reward you openly. And so that's why it was so important with what David did. After he connected with the Lord, after he shut the door, the Lord then spoke, said, boy, go on up into the enemy's camp. He says, you're going to recover everything that's yours, not just some, but all all of it. In essence, what the Lord told him, go take your stuff. Go get your stuff. Turn to your neighbor, tell him, go get your stuff. Uh, come on, worship team, go and get your stuff. Come on, encourage somebody. So we got to take it back. Mm. So whether it's our grandchildren, it's our spouse, it's our parents, our uncle, uh, it doesn't matter, an auntie, I'm going to take this. Uh, listen here, you got to put a line of demarcation. You got to establish and say, listen here, devil, all of this belongs to me. I'm tired of you coming in on my stuff. This belongs to me. This is my stuff. And anything that you thought you took, I come to serve you notice. I come to take it back. I, I might have messed up a little bit. I, I, I might have got off track for a little while. And I, I might have lost my way, but I shut the door and I got in the presence of the Most High God. Can I tell you something? A transformed man and a transformed woman will go and do great exploits for God. But I want you to know it won't just be in the church, not just on your job, but in your family. God can bring miracles. Now, just in case some of you think I don't know what I'm talking about, there have been times when, when me and Pastor Brian has had some intense fellowship. <laughs> intense. I mean intense. I remember one time, remember one time uh, our fellowship got so intense we were talking to our pastor. And so and he said, now, Brian, you got to understand Antoinette. You got to understand her. I mean, uh, the girl, is, she functions in the prophetic. Uh, 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 so she naturally is accustomed to going after things. And, 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 and you got to understand this is her makeup. And, and I had to learn. I, 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 when something would go wrong, I would come, I would come to him. And, and, and why did this happen? And I, and I don't understand, honey. How, how, why can't we just this? And I, I just, let's talk about it. Let's, talk, let's get to the bottom of it. And I want to I get to the bottom of it. And he would sit there and he would look and he would shut down. He shut down and he just looked. And I had to realize, Antoinette, you're not getting anywhere because you're trying to fix it. And God can't fix it. Because, uh, Antoinette, you can't fix it. Only God can fix this thing. 
And, and so we got to the point in realizing that we can't be talking about in the pulpit, talking about Jesus and at home at each other's neck, right? And so if God can do it in the church, surely God can do it at home. So I had to learn, answering that, you better pray. You're going to have to learn how to shut the door and go pray. And so I had to get to the place where I had to learn to pray. And so at times he would see me on my knees. He would see me crying out, praying to God. I would see him put on some worship music and start to worship. And so we might start out where he's way over there and I'm way over here. But let me tell you, when you bring God in, when you bring God in, I'm praying and I'm getting closer. He's worshiping. He's coming closer. Oh, I'm on my knees and I'm getting closer. And the whole time I say, I want to knock him out. And the whole time he's saying, I like to shake her. I like to shake her. I like to shake her. And then we go back. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, change me. Lord, fix me. Lord, do something in me. And then as we got closer, you see, worshiping and praising God brings us closer. And then when we get closer, honey, I'm sorry. Baby, I'm sorry too. And then what what turn what that turn into? A good love making session, right? You get closer. Right? You hold each other. You repent. Huh? And so now, what was I mad at him? Yes. But did I need to see that that's God's son? Yes. Did he need to see that I'm God's child? Yes. And what was more important? We had to understand, but we had to shut the door. Because before we shut the door, I wanted to take him out. I wanted to take him out. Before we shut the door, he looked at me and said, mm, what did I get myself into? You know, we, we see this, and this is what happened. You have to understand, when we shut the door, right, instead of then letting the enemy push us back, we get an attitude, I'm going to get mine. I'm going to get everything that God promised me. Lord, you said pursue, and you will recover all. And so is there anybody here say, I want to recover all. I want to get all that belongs to me. I want to get all that God has promised to me. I want to get it all. 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 Come on, stand with me. Hey. You can't do it. Psalm 127 said, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who builds it. In the house, the foundation brings stability, the wall security, and the roof a covering. When our house is built by the Lord, he'll bring stability, he'll bring security, and he will cover us. Come on, give the Lord a clap off. One more time, look at the neighbor and tell him, take it back. Yeah. The enemy might have gotten it, but it was only temporary. The enemy might have messed up some things, but it was only temporary. Take it back, take it back. Woo! Oh. Lift your hands, I just want to see this. I just feel this prophetic prayer. Lord, I thank you for every family represented here and where the enemy has come in to kill, steal, and destroy. I rebuke the thief and I tell him to go in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you restore back that which belonged to your people. Restore marriages. Restore families. Restore, restore children. Lord, restore the sons back to their fathers, the daughters back to their mothers. Oh God, restore, restore, restore. And what the enemy has taken, I thank you that he's got to return it. Oh, a hundredfold. We come, God, to take back that which you've given us. And so God, wash us, cleanse us, stabilize our home, bring security, God. God, and cover up, oh God, so the enemy would not come in and be able to destroy us. And so I thank you right now that today is a new day. We're stepping into new territory because you're transforming us. Not only will our families be brought new, God, but God, the whole community will see Jesus. The whole community will see a transformed family. The whole community will see this is what a man and a woman of God can do in their family. 
And so, Lord, we thank you for this. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Come on, give the Lord a clap off. Jesus, 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 Some of you have been hurt so deeply. And you've wanted to give up on your family. I come to tell you, don't give up. Don't give up. Do it God's way. Let God guide you. Let God direct you. The Bible says that God says, vengeance is mine. Let God rectify. Let God be judge and jury. Let God do it. You just do what's right. You keep your heart right. And God's about to turn things around. He's going to turn things around. Uh, If you've done the hurting, go to somebody and in love say, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. It wasn't my intent. If you've been hurt, Lord, thank you. Thank you for delivering me from this hurt and this pain. Is there anyone in here this morning? I know I'm talking about family. But you don't know Jesus. You don't know the Lord. You've never accepted him into your life. Or maybe you accepted him into your life. And you've walked away because you've been hurt. Because you've experienced pain. While every eye is closed at this moment. If that's you, I just want you to raise your hand. Raise your hand. You've you've walked away from the Lord because of pain. Or you've never had a relationship with God. I want you to lift your hand if that's you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. So, Lord, I just thank you and give you glory for your people being transformed by your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. from us. Deuteronomy puts it this way. See, I have placed the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swore